China has successfully landed its first rover on Mars. The Tianwen-1 lander touched the planet's surface after surviving the treacherous descent by parachute. NASA's InSight lander found that a significant amount of water has seeped into Mars's crust, adding another layer to the mystery. Humankind's instruments have mapped the corners of the planet, poked at the gravel underfoot, and sampled the air that wafts across the dusty plains. Scientists have learned much from the data collected and beamed back to Earth. The Chinese Mars rover Zhurong adds an exciting twist to the story and history of water on Mars. After landing in southern Utopia Planitia on Mars in May 2021, the now-defunct Zhurong rover went to work exploring the Martian surface, and its latest findings might just change the way we think about the Red Planet. Bo Wu and a team of researchers from Hong Kong Polytechnic University believe they've found compelling evidence of an ocean shoreline for a massive body of water that once covered Mars' northern lowlands. Don't forget to press the like and subscribe button and stay till the end of this video, because some Mars secrets have been discovered, so we're going to talk about them. Water doesn't currently exist on Mars' surface, but it used to. We know this from dramatic dry canyons and river channels seen from orbit, as well as minerals on the surface that only form in liquid water. Around 3 billion years ago, something happened to Mars' atmosphere, and most of the liquid water evaporated. But some of it may still be underground, safely shielded from harmful solar radiation that bombards the planet's surface. Could those ancient pockets of water contain life? As China's first Mars mission, Tianwen-1 is uniquely ambitious. No nation had ever attempted to send an orbiter and rover to Mars on the first try. But China succeeded, making Tianwen-1 a historic victory. Tianwen-1 arrived in Mars orbit as a single spacecraft. Once on Mars, the landing platform extended a ramp, allowing the Zhurong rover to roll gently onto the surface, similar to the way China's Change Moon rovers are deployed. Zhurong successfully landed on the Red Planet on May 14th. The rover touched down on Utopia Planitia, the vast Martian plain where NASA's Viking 2 spacecraft landed in the 1970s and the site of a shipbuilding yard in the Star Trek universe. Mars landings are uniquely challenging. They require heat shielding, thrusters, and supersonic parachutes, a teeth-gnashing experience that NASA has dubbed the Seven Minutes of Terror. Before our first probe swung by Mars, scientists thought that the planet could be lush and teeming with life. With their telescopes, early scientists made out canal-like features on the surface that they mistook as artificial structures built by intelligent species. But after the Mariner 4 probe flew by the Red Planet during the first Mars mission and snapped pictures of a barren surface, these interpretations were proved wrong. Through these missions, we've learned that Mars is devoid of liquid water. Its rocky surface is pockmarked by impact craters, scraped by strong winds, brushed by slow-moving sand dunes, carved by deep valleys and punctuated by impressive volcanoes. Mars is also home to the tallest and largest volcano in the solar system, Olympus Mons, which rises two and a half times as high as Mount Everest at 13.6 miles. The most precise measurement of the volcano's dimensions so far comes from the Mars Global Surveyor in 2004. Although Mars's surface is bone dry, as far as scientists can tell, it has water just not in liquid form. Water is locked away as ice, atmospheric vapor, and atoms embedded in the molecular structure of its minerals. A Martian geologist at Rice University, Kirsten Zeebach, says, Mars is a still and quiet place compared to Earth, and it doesn't harbor life as we know it. The planet is like a freeze-dried environment. The conditions allowed for Mars's geologic record to be preserved for billions of years. As Mariner 4 flew by Mars, it peered through the gassy sheath and picked up all kinds of information. For one, the atmospheric pressure is only 0.7% of Earth's. The planet's smaller gravity and lack of a magnetic field prevent it from retaining a thick, gaseous shell. The atmosphere is so wispy that it doesn't do a good job of trapping heat from the sun to keep the surface warm throughout the day. Mars has an average temperature of minus 80 degrees Fahrenheit. Given these frigid temperatures and low atmospheric pressures, Mars can't support liquid water. If you were to place a tub of liquid water on the planet, most of it would quickly vaporize into gas, the rest would succumb to Mars's bitter chill and freeze into ice. 
Nevertheless, Mars's atmosphere is thick enough to sustain dust storms, and they stir up so frequently that they're a perennial feature of the red planet Mars once sustained liquid water. In 1971, scientists collected ample evidence that liquid water once flowed on the planet. Mars's topographical features include river runoff channels, carved gullies, eroded impact craters, and mud cracks baked into the ground that give us a hint at a watery past. Moreover, in 2005, the European Space Agency's Mars Express Orbiter detected hydrated minerals, rocks containing a telltale mix of hydrogen and oxygen atoms in their crystal structure that could have only formed in the presence of liquid water. Ever since the rover Curiosity landed on Mars in 2012, it has been wandering inside Gale Crater, which was formerly a lake bed. Curiosity has found proof that liquid water once pooled here. In 2014, it photographed sedimentary outcrops with a layered structure. Scientists think they're silty pileups that gushed from a river onto a delta. Although Martian liquid water likely lasted for millions of years, it all but vanished 2 billion to 3 billion years ago. But its presence and persistence imply that long ago, Mars experienced a thicker atmosphere and warmer temperatures. All this points toward an ancient environment suitable for harboring life. On October 5, 2020, a team of scientists announced the discovery of a group of one billion year old Martian sand dunes in the planet's Valle Marineris region. This rare find of paleo dunes led scientists to a second big discovery, that is, climate, atmospheric pressure, and landscape evolution on Mars have remained relatively consistent over the past billion years. Further research showed that beneath the dune surface lies bright material layered beneath a darker top layer called a transitional reflective surface, or TRS. This material likely formed in the last 400,000 years and suggests significant changes occurred during that time. It is believed that these dunes formed between 2 million and 400,000 years ago during a period of intense climate fluctuations, a period that mirrors the dramatic ice age experienced by our own planet. In the 17th century, scientists made telescopic observations that Mars's poles appeared as bright spots set against a darker planet. Young ice caps bookend the red planet, and they are estimated to have formed only within the last five million years of Mars's lifetime. The Mars Reconnaissance Orbiter and the Mars Express Orbiter revealed that the polar ice is made of layers of solidified CO2, frozen water, and windswept dust, and it grows and shrinks during the annual seasons. These layers are like tree rings, geological records of Mars's seasonal climate that scientists can study. From their high perches above Martian ground, the MAVEN and Mars Global Surveyor satellites confirm that Mars has no planetary magnetic dipole like Earth. However, mapping revealed pockets of regional magnetic fields stamped all over the crust. The magnetic mosaic comes from volcanic rocks at the surface that carry traces of Mars's remnant magnetic field. A planet's magnetic shield comes from the churning of the sphere's interior. A melt in the core consisting of swirling iron and nickel generates an electric current, which in turn powers a planet-sized electromagnet. Invisible magnetic field lines envelop most planets in the solar system, including Earth. Being a smaller planet, Mars cooled off much sooner than Earth did, and its roiling innards quietened. With that went Mars's global magnetosphere, but metals near the planet's surface captured a snapshot of the field as they solidified, and they have retained their magnetic imprint. These scattered magnetic fields on the crust lead to spectacular auroras that look nothing like Earth's. Auroras are caused by charged particles that rain down from the sun into the atmosphere. On Earth, these ghostly glows congregate at the poles as the magnetic field is strongest there. But the auroras on Mars can shimmy close to the equator since no planetary field confines them. Among the thousands of meteorites in the scientific cache on Earth, a tiny fraction of them stand out from the crowd. Scientists didn't know where they came from, but after the Viking landers arrived on Mars in 1976 and sampled the environment, compositional analysis of Mars's atmosphere confirmed that the oddball rocks were Martian meteorites. Around 300 such meteorites sit in scientists' collections on Earth. These rocks were exiled from Mars after impactors struck the planet's surface and kicked debris into space. The resulting fragments floated in the void for millennia until they made landfall on Earth. 
These rocks have led to thousands of publications since and given scientists a close-up peek at the rusty planet. During that idyllic episode, Mars could have harbored life. In 2013, Curiosity identified in the rocks all the key chemical ingredients needed to support life. In around 2013 and in 2018, it even detected organic matter in the rocks. Most scientists think that Mars is lifeless now, although a few argue that life could be sheltering underground. But no one can say for sure whether the red planet could have also been a teeming one. Whether Mars has or has had life is the biggest mystery, fueling much of the excitement about our ruddy neighbor. Whichever way the answers swing will illuminate Earth's place in the universe. But for now, researchers don't have the means to answer this question. Humankind's limited meteorite samples are too weathered. The Perseverance rover is busy squirreling away Martian samples from Jesse Yoro Crater, where liquid water once existed. A return mission to retrieve these samples is slated for 2027. If all goes well, these specimens are due to arrive on Earth in 2033 when they may open up a whole new era of discovery. Water is a key ingredient for life as we know it. If Mars had oceans, could it have also hosted life? It's a tantalizing thought that keeps scientists up at night. We hope you liked the video. If you did, please give us a like, share, and subscribe to our channel for more videos like this. Don't forget to leave a comment below. We would love to hear from you. Thank you for watching and see you next time.